So I was born in 2000, I was born on the 3rd of December. I am a Sagittarius, obviously, so I'm so fiery. I was born in Newham, and in true my style, I was born in a very dramatic way. So I was a month early, I was due in January, and I was born at the beginning of December. So I, I was premature. I was really, really small, I was four pound four, and I was in intensive care, and my mum had preeclampsia when she had me. And I think that's why we're so close to each other, because she just loved me so much, because it was so traumatic when she had me. Like, they literally thought that we was gonna die, like, or one of us was gonna, because it was really bad. But when I was like one, she moved me to Chafford 100, so that's obviously in Essex. The relationship with me and my mum is just like, we're like best friends. I feel like some people see that as an insult, calling my mum and my best friend, but I don't. I think it's the best compliment ever. She's my best friend, and she's the person that I fully trust the most. I feel like with me, I find it quite hard to trust people. I've got quite a lot of barriers up. So with my mum, we've got the best relationship ever. We do argue like cat and dog, and I'm sure everyone around us has seen that, but we'll be fine with each other two minutes after. As a little girl, I was exactly how you see me now, but just a tiny version. <laughs> so I was the definition of a prat. Not a brat, a prat. I was dramatic. I hated going to school, I hated being told what to do. All I wanted to do was be older and I was like obsessed with being a woman basically. I just wanted to grow up. I grew up really quickly as a kid because, and it wasn't to do with my upbringing. My mum very much wanted me to be a child. Like she would take me to gymnastics, horse riding, ballet. She took me to everything. I only went for the tuck shop. I just wanted the sweets afterwards. I didn't want to do any of the activities and I didn't want to be with the other kids because we didn't have much in common. Like, I remember my mum taking me to a soft play when I was younger, and my mum going mental at me because I wanted to sit with the adults and drink a latte. I was probably about five. I've always been very dramatic anyway. I'm always very dramatic. If you see me on a day-to-day -day dilemma, you would think I'm going through an absolute nightmare. But I'm just a dramatic person. I deal with things dramatically, and then I get over them quicker. It's just what I'm like, I've always been the same, literally always. My mum said, I don't remember a time when you've not had Aggie in your life. I don't. When I was about eight, I started doing acting. So I'd go to singing, dancing and acting lessons every weekend. And from that, I started getting acting work. So it just sort of fell into it. So I remember doing like Eon Energy adverts and NSPCC advert, all these things. And I was like eight. And I think when you're doing that, you sort of automatically do start acting older because you're conversing like with, with adults and stuff like that. So it did make me grow up quite quickly. And then I grew a pair of boobs and I couldn't do acting anymore because I looked too grown up. I was always interested in boys since I was young. There's like photos of me when I was younger, like my mum's wedding. She had a friend who had a son and I'm kissing him. At his wedding, at her wedding, I was probably about five. But in school, I never had a boyfriend. So all the way through secondary school, I didn't have a boyfriend because I decided that I wanted to marry River Phoenix, who's dead. I was fixated on him. I actually turned vegetarian for a year over it because I loved him that much. And then I got my first boyfriend when I was 17. He's quite a lot older than me. So at that point, I wasn't like a normal 17 year old. I was working in London, had like a nine to five in London. Um, he was quite a lot older than me. But, you know, at the time it was great, but then I, a couple of months in, I thought to myself, he's a bit too old for me. Like, I should be going out on nights out and, you know, going on girls' holidays and stuff like that. I used to hate walking to school. I literally lived over the road from the school and every day I would manage to be late, every single day. And I was known for crying on the way to school as well. Like, absolutely tears walked like, down my face, crying. Like, I don't want to be here, I hate it. But the thing is, I'm actually quite clever and I've done quite well in school. I was so naughty at school. I still speak to one of my teachers because we got really close. She was like my form tutor. And without her, I would have been kicked out of the school. So when I finished school, I didn't have a clue what I was going to do. I did do all right, but stuff like maths and stuff like that was awful. I, didn't, I don't think I've done, I've, I haven't got a GCSE in maths, so I didn't bother. So I was at college training to do like hair and media makeup because I thought maybe I'll do makeup on film sets. I loved being on film sets when I was younger. Maybe I'd love to do that, you know. It's still something exciting, isn't it? But I didn't really like doing makeup. <laughs> so I didn't I didn't like that. So I'd done that for two weeks, left and got a job in London. So I was working at a hair salon. I really liked that job. I always compare it to like 
the America's Next Top Model of hair salons because there's just assistants crying 24 seven and people like throwing themselves on the floor. But I loved it, I loved the drama of it and like getting involved and you know, it's a salon full of women bitching about each other. It's just my absolute dream. But I didn't like cutting hair. So I would just swan about talking to everyone. I left one day after having a bicker with a manager, very dramatically. I was the one in the wrong, but I made out to my mum that I hadn't done anything. So my mum turned up, picked up my hair dryer, my scissors that she'd paid for me that she definitely didn't have the money for. I was like, Chloe's leaving. And a year later, I was like, no, it was my fault. And she was like, this is why I can't stand you most of the time. <laughs> I left in the September and got asked to go and tell me in the December. I was 18 and my mum had paid for this really lavish birthday for me. She'd like, got me trips, a trip to Paris. I had no money to go to any of these places. So I was temping, and when I say I probably got about 250 pound, and that was what I had. Bought myself outfits, kept the label on each of them, and then wore them, went out, pretended I was living this absolute lavish life, and then took the item back after, because I had no money. But on my Instagram, I looked like I was living the high life, so the people who was casting probably thought, who's this girl? <laughs> I remember the first day on set, I overthought my outfit so much that I ended up wearing snake print flares, a roll neck, and like a Baker Boy hat. I'm, I'm very over dramatic this outfit, I've never worn that again. And Joey wore a bright green top. And we clashed on camera, and then we clashed in the car park as well because I went to him, why are you digging me out on camera? Told him he was a car ponce and he wasn't allowed to get in my car. I'm not really sure, he'd never been in my car. But yeah, it's all very dramatic. I wouldn't change any of it because when I look back, at how I started and now, and it's only in the space of two years, I feel like I start looking at a different person. I feel like I've, <laughs> facially, <laughs> it's changed. And also, I feel like I've really grown up as well. You know, I've, I've, I joined the show when I was 18. Like, that is young. I'd, you know, I went on giving it the bigger, like, you know, we're the it people in Essex. Of course we weren't. We hasn't been on nights out. Do you know what I mean? No one knew us, I've just turned 18. And then now, like I've been on the show for two years, I feel like I know who I am as a person so much more. I don't feel like I completely do, because I'm 20, but I feel like being on the show has really helped me grow because I feel like I'm so much more self-confident in myself because I've had to be. I don't have a clue what the future holds for Chloe Brockett. I don't know. All I know is I'm here to stay and I'm not going anywhere. I, I would be on Tabby forever if I could, I think. I feel like, you know, I've already got time on my side, so I'm 20. I'm, I've got a long go. I've got, I've got so much to do yet. I've got so much. Watch this face. <laughs>